Uh, I'd like to uh, talk today about uh, a chapter that for uh, a lack of room, because we're going to go to a higher thing soon, we won't have time to discuss in the usual detail. Um, it has to do with the uh, with going back to the connections between a graph and itself. And uh, here's the main result. So the idea here is that uh, you, uh, you want to classify uh, Dunkin diagrams, but also the higher Dunkin diagrams. Since we did everything on the Dunkin diagrams, we'll need to do everything on the higher Dunkin diagrams to, to uh, get to the, um, the higher representation theory. That's a, that's a plan. So work with, remember that, uh, that what we did was work on a ribbon, and that ribbon was entirely given by SU2, on tensoring of SU2, with the essential path, counting essential path, and so on. So this, the plan is that that was opening the way to uh, doing the same in the higher case uh, with, uh, with other, uh, other simple Lie groups instead of SU2. If you take SU2 times SU2 times SU2, then you get tensors. But if you want to get uh, higher, uh, the higher analogs, you go to SU3 and SU4. That's the idea. And let me show you how this starts in a very elementary way. We'll go back. Namely, suppose that we take a graph, and let's take now as an example the graph, uh, our graph D4. And you take the same graph four times. So, do something like this. Remember, we have computed once the connections between these. But now we'll show something that works in general. If you remember, let me, let me recall for you that if you call these i's and these j's, then we had a three by three matrix, which was uh, up to gauge something like one, 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 one Q, Q inverse, one Q inverse Q, where Q was equal to X of uh, two pi I over three, the third root of unity. Yes. And by the way, you can recognize here a pattern. Uh, what, can you recognize what this table is here? Maybe you have seen it for a group, yes? It's exactly the character table, character table of Z mod three, yes? And uh, you can do exactly the same for any group. You can take uh, here group elements and here group representations. And you will put here the table of uh, matrix elements of representations, yes? You may know for a finite group uh, what is the biunitarity. The first condition is that each representation is unitary, yes. 
which is fixing something like this i and j. Here every q was unitary, was a one by one unitary. And the other theorem, maybe you have done it in a course of uh, representations of finite groups. It's called the Peter Weil theorem. So each irreducible representation of all representations of a finite group, finite group G, each irreducible representation is unitary. And all matrix units together form a unitary. Uh, check for this, the theorem, the theorem is called Peter Weil. And to this, we'll add our observation that uh, this by unitary determines determines a group. Now, instead, we'll take here the graph G. So all these graphs all are G of type AD. And uh, we shall define now uh, a connection here. So if we have a, maybe I should make it a little bit bigger. If we have a cell like this, and let's mark the vertices with A, B, C, D. Assume here there's one, a single edge, although that's, so that's always the case for IDs, but not necessarily in general. And uh, we should define this as uh, braiding, like this. Now, we need to give a uh, meaning to this. And uh, uh, for SU2, uh, this would be, remember, first of all, uh, what are these edges? So here, edges are tensoring, are coming from tensoring with a standard representation. Sigma is the, uh, the fundamental irreducible representation of SU2. So the edges are coming from tensoring. And the edges of the edges of the square cell. And uh, so this, namely, let's write here an example with the upper edge A to D is in sigma, is in home from sigma tensor A to D. Tensoring, so you can see now who should be the wires here. 
in this picture. Can you figure out fast? Well, you tensor A and you go to D, right? So the wires should be what you tensored with, right? Which is sigma. So this is sigma and this is sigma again. So these are the generators. Sigma and sigma. Now, we are going to do that right away. So we have now, you know, we know how to, uh, what this node is, but we don't know this one exactly as you're asking, yes? And in order to do that, we'll decompose. We, we should see that from sigma, we should maybe orient them, but it's not fundamental. So from sigma tends uh, sigma to, you see here, to sigma tends to sigma again. Now, for SL2, this is sigma tensor sigma is how many, is two dimensional, yes? This is a spin one half. So this is 2D. So there are two maps from sigma tensor sigma, two intertwiners from sigma tensor sigma to sigma tensor sigma. And these are, we have done them. One is uh, sigma and sigma, one is the identity and the other, and we'll neglect for the moment the, uh, the orientation, the other is this. So here you go from sigma tensor sigma to what in the middle? Nothing, which stands for the which representation? The trivial, yes? So sigma here is a trivial and then back from the trivial to sigma tensor sigma, yes? So we're going to put now a, uh, a, a definition. So this is, the idea is that a braiding like this, yes, is, is a linear combination of intertwiners, of homes. And we have to find which are the intertwiners which work, yes? And in fact, I have proved at the time a rigidity theorem which, which, showed that, which shows that actually you have a finite number of possibilities in a rational, I mean, if you have finitely many irreducibles in general. So uh, we should uh, draw it now like this, sigma tensor sigma, so this, so this is a notational convention, but for the left-hand side, but we define it as being something like, uh, and we, we're going to normalize it now, so it comes out, uh, right? We're going to take alpha, uh, and so this again, let's put A, B, C, D. A, A B, C, D is in, the way we had it at the beginning. So this is going to be alpha times, um, this and here we're going to put, you see why we're going to put this uh, note here plus alpha bar times the other, the symmetric picture. Where where this is read as so let's write here that this 
is read as Kronika symbol. In general, Kronika symbol of edges. So it's basically the graphic shows you what, what it does, right? It takes the two edges. You remember we had this for contraction. And this is uh, is the um, e to the one half, where this is a Peron Frobenius eigenvector. of G. Remember that, so let's say mu of A to the one half. And uh, remember that we had uh, delta G of mu is equal to quantum two at the nth root of unity times mu. Yes. And for this, for our graph at hand, for instance, for the, so example, here we had one, 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 uh, and root three. And you notice that in this case, quantum two at the sixth root of unity is root three. And that's the eigenvalue. If you add the neighbors, you get exactly root three times the value at that point. Yes. So now, with this definition, which should work for any graph AD, uh, we check that this, remember we have to check that it's a bi-unitary, so we check that uh, if we take this rhombus here times the other rhombus and we glue here. So, quick question. So that first term, I'm saying it's available for A. Right, E and uh, where? Uh, the, 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 the first term, the other IG. Oh, those uh, stood for corners there, for vertices. Uh, yes, uh, here the vertex appears here uh, as a normalization. Here we are no, we're not adding vertices. Thank you. That's a good observation. Uh, these are edges, edges, and in this case, in the case of ADs, the edges are entirely determined by the vertices. But this is not the case in general. So I wanted to give a slightly more general, general. Uh, um, Another quick question, sir. Sure. These, these, uh, these two, uh, two, two lines in your phrase, which one, which one up, which one down? Does that matter? Uh, it does not. And actually, uh, we have, let's make an, as per your good observation, let me jump ahead and say that we have two such. namely one on top and one at the bottom. Yes, so we'll define, uh, so there are actually two canonical, they are different, they are complex conjugate. They will be complex conjugate. So all the coefficients will be complex conjugate. And now, if we glue these two together, the idea is that uh, this would be something like this. And uh, so let's write it here. This is one, and it goes up. And this is the other, and it goes down, and this should be exactly the 
the Reidemeister move, and we'll have to check it. And this here is exactly the unitarity, right? This is Kronecker of this edge and of these two edges and the other two. Yes? So now let's check this. If we glue them together as we did, then we get the following. We get four terms. And the first should be the following. Uh, let me take it. One should be this. See, remember that there was a note here. So this is One is this. The next is this one. Uh, still the same here, but the other one different. The same here. but the other one different. And finally, this. Again, as I was saying, the picture indicates exactly what we do to every element of the picture. Now, here, uh, let's put the markers. This is A, this is B. And now, here, do you see AB must be equal to this one? So this should be B as well. And uh, here we should have a C. So we'll take the case one. And uh, here we have a D in the middle. And here we have the, in the sum, if you notice. So these two edges are equal here. And this is BD and DB. So we have the sum over all Ds of D times the number of edges DB. In the middle. And this, you recognize this is Nabla, this is a Laplacian a delta mu. Evaluated to B. And this is quantum two times B. Times mu of B.
So this is in the middle. So the total is going to be now uh, a to the one half, c to the one half, and a to the one half, c to the one half, and then uh, b times two. And the Kronecker symbols with Kronecker symbols as shown. So unless the, the markers are A, B, C, D exactly like this, I mean that this is equal to the upper one, then the rest is zero. Then in this case, we have an A. Uh, look, here is B. Uh, now, here, this edge must be the same as this one because of this, uh, this edge. So this must be here C. So this must be here C as well. And uh, now, because of this segment, this must be B and uh, back. And uh, so what we get here is in two, we get uh, A to the one half, C to the one half, B. Ah, and we forgot something. This one uh, here, this, this one is conjugate, and this will be multiplied by alpha, alpha bar. Remember that we have a coefficient. Uh, while this one is multiplied, say, by alpha, and this one by alpha bar. So this is times alpha, and three similarly, we have again A, C, B, B, and we have exactly the same A to the one half, C to the one half, B, B times alpha bar. Oh, absolutely, thank you very much. The alpha square and alpha bar squared. So this is here alpha squared and alpha bar squared. Thank you. Each of them has an alpha. And this one will be again alpha, alpha bar. And uh, so in the case four, we have an alpha, alpha bar. And uh, the, then it's times, let's say this is B. And this is going to be A, and this must be A again, because this edge must be the same as the other. Yes, so this is alpha, alpha bar. We'll just compute the coefficient, and then it's uh, B. Uh, this is not the same, necessarily. This is some C, and B, so this is B, C. And uh, so we're computing here only the coefficients now. What this is exactly the coefficient of normalization of bi unitary normalization. is exactly B and C here. And uh, this, so the Kronecker symbol, this is in four. This is exactly the Kronecker symbol or the identity. Uh, 
the first half is equal to the last half, the identity, the chronicle symbol of the left side and the right side of the picture. So what we really need to have is the following, or rather let me move it up and write it better. Maybe we'll skip uh, this background. So what we need to have is alpha, alpha bar is one, and uh, alpha square plus alpha bar square is equal to uh, plus quantum two should be equal to zero, so that one plus two plus three gives zero. And uh, uh, now quantum two was equal to two cosine of pi over n, and this was e to the pi i over n plus e to the negative pi i over n. And so what we want is that alpha square be equal to um, minus e to the pi i over n, or that alpha be equal to i times e to the pi i over 2n, or alpha be equal to negative i e to the negative pi i over 2n. If we take uh, the other uh, same i, so this is a plus or minus i here, depending on uh, uh, this, we should put here plus minus pi i over n. And uh, well, we can, uh, uh, compute this uh, this alpha. So uh, let me rather than make the computation, uh, show show you the computation in uh, in Mathematica. So let me lower the screen. And note here that we had our, so what, what is a three by three table that we get in the case of D? Ooh, this is a bit too much. So in the case of D, that's the only case. So we'll have a matrix three by three. And in our new notation, this is on the diagonal. So this is I here and J. And we have, a look at them here we have a Kronecker symbol when i is equal to j, right? The other is always there, the other Kronecker symbol. Yes, so, 
So let's write this. This Kronecker symbol is this thing is always while this Kronecker symbol here this will give us a root 3 and this thing is 1 here and uh, this will give us uh, root 3 times uh, Kronecker of ij And so what we have here is uh, alpha, uh, alpha, let's say alpha everywhere. And here we have alpha plus root three Kronecker of ij, so alpha plus root 3 alpha bar. Okay, on the diagonal, yes? And I just wanted to, to uh, this is a case of d4. So that's why I did a computation here. Uh, look, if you have uh, the, the root that, uh, so in this case, uh, alpha is uh, exp. Of two pi, what is it? Two pi over five over 12. Pi i, yes, uh, one part of that comes from square root of i because alpha square, alpha, so it comes from this i, yes, whose so i comes a pi over two. And okay, so alpha is this exponential and then you can check that uh, uh, that if you take uh, alpha plus, so I didn't want to spend too much time on this, alpha plus root three alpha inverse, yes, then by renormalizing with alpha inverse, we, got, we get exactly x of two pi i over three. So what this shows is that this, if we remember that we had some gauge, which was that we could multiply each line by, by unitary, and in this case, it will be alpha bar. Yes, so if we multiply by alpha bar, then we'll have, uh, uh, Wait, so we multiply by alpha, uh, by alpha bar here, and we multiply by uh, alpha bar here. So that we get, uh, one and one, and for the for this, uh, we check there. So alpha plus root three alpha bar. Is uh, equal to alpha times. X times q e to the 2 pi i over 3. This is e to the 2 pi i over 3. Yes. 
So, uh, so if we multiply like this, it means that uh, uh, so anyway, we will alpha. No, we should multiply here by. Uh, let's see. The multiplication is a bit different. Alpha plus root three alpha bar. Let's let's uh, change it as in the as in the picture. So the computation is the following. The result is alpha q alpha 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 q alpha alpha and alpha q and uh, you can get rid of the alphas first by multiplying here by alpha bar so let's erase this we multiply here by alpha bar each of them Remember, we had the freedom to multiply every line and every column with something. So we get this way Q Q1, 1, 1, 1, one Q, and 1, 1, Q. And now uh, I let you uh, uh, figure out, oh, let, let's do it. Here we multiply the first row, for instance, by Q bar, the, this row. And then we'll have here one, and then we'll have here two Q bars, so we multiply by Q and by another Q, and uh, we got it, yes? So this is going to be one, 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 and this is Q square, which is Q bar, Q Q and Q bar, which is one of the two connections that we had. Yeah? So, uh, however, the connection that I gave you works in general. And uh, uh, now we'll have to uh, spend uh, maybe, I'll, I'll, um, I will outline. Uh, what we'll do in the next So now we'll start with a graph ADE and we shall build some uh, uh, some algebra and this this is the, uh, the this algebra will so it will be a Hopf algebra And uh, now remember that we had a, uh, uh, we need a, a bit of a translation here, which is, A and B are vertices on the graph G. And uh, this, which will mark by one, one is sigma one. This is a fundamental of fundamental irreducible of SU two. So this is spin the spin one half marked with a one. And this here is 
xi, the meeting point. You see, if you have an edge and one which enters, let's say, xi is in home, as it's written there, from A tends to sigma. You see, you read it, A tends to sigma goes to, maybe we should mark it the other way. Uh, sigma, this is better. We'll mark it the other way. A is a home from sigma tends to B. So this is here is sigma. Sigma tends to B to A. And now we'll take the algebra of double triangles, which I have introduced in the 1990, early 1990s. So these are the double triangles. And remember now our squares with which we encoded Hopf algebras and so on at the very beginning. This is a moment to use them. So this is made of a pair. This is a pair of edges. A, B are in the vertices of a graph G and C, D are in the vertices of a graph G prime. And in the middle, so in this area, we have SU2. And what you see here, and this is important in uh, physics applications, is that what we, what we have is a region of SU2, and what we're putting with these edges is, can you see? We, put to, we give this region a, yes? A boundary, yes. So this is a boundary. of SU2 region. In the middle, we'll have the usual computations of SU2. So we'll have intertwiners of SU2. Uh, so everything will be the usual TQFT for SU2. Yes? And what we're giving with these graphs is a boundary. So now let me let me show you uh, how uh, how we compute with such things. So this one has a. Uh, by the way, you see, it corresponds here to a triangulation, yes, and it is diagonalized for the for the vertical multiplication. If you notice. So if you take the vertical multiplication for these, for these, this would be just uh, uh, the following. After you glue them and you sum, this is going to be the following type of computation. Now, as I was uh, saying, I may skip details, but you notice here that you have a home from uh, SU2 to SU2, right? So this is a scalar. So this is uh, just some coef times the uh, this scalar times uh, the remaining things. So basically, this means that it's the multiplication, vertical multiplication is diagonal. So the, the details are in a paper that was published of mine in 1995, the path from Coxeter graphs and so, and since then, so after that, they have appeared in the literature. 
Sure. Uh, yeah, no, it's a very good question. What kind of boundary is this? We should stop in a minute, but uh, uh, so what it is, is we have a, uh, yeah, it's both. So we have a region, a topological quantum field theory of SL2. Yes, so we, we, uh, we can tense uh, representations of SL2 and later for SL3 or any quantum group. Yes, we can tense a representation, take homes and so on. So we want, it's a two-dimensional TQFT. So we want to give the, the two-dimensional TQFT a, a boundary in two dimensions. Yes, now there is also uh, another one which has to do with uh, Yes, you have a two-dimensional TQFT, and there are regions in which you compute things. Yes, so in the main region, everything is of type uh, AA, and the elements are sigma, sigma K, uh, the, the reducibles of... Uh, in uh, two dimensions, however, in two dimensions. However, if you go to three dimensions now, and you want... Uh, so the region underlies space-time, that's what we Yes. So if you want a... Uh, if you want, and I, I won't have uh, time now, but I'll come back next time. If you want a TQFT with boundary, in which you can have, for instance, uh, the Hilbert space for an apple from which you took a bite, yes, which would include shell and the inside. Uh, this also functions that way. So this is in, in again in my notes in 1998 at the conference in Nara. We'll continue next time. Yeah, so that's the idea. It works for both boundary in the TQFT. And so for me, this is really, uh, it means that, uh, I mean, my, my intuition is that in the middle of the room, you have a certain group like uh, SO3. And when you go to a wall, you have a boundary and there the freedom group is changing. Yes, so that's another type of computation you have on the boundary. So, yeah. It's a very mild So if you're in two dimensions, also this word boundary comes in, so that is something like a key brain. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, no, this, is, this construction is fundamental. So all we have done with these exceptional graphs uh, was to put the boundary to, to the theory. So you're absolutely right. This is this is a crucial observation that these uh, that these uh, ADEs are boundaries, and uh, that's what we'll do to, uh, next time. And then we'll show. Uh, so the the next part is an attempt, the higher part, yes, to do the same in higher dimensions, and there the boundary should be uh, very much. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, with some luck, we could find uh, actual particles or so. So, so uh, uh.